Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be talking about the list of bases and the nickel files. So the most common bases and nickel files that you're going to be seeing in sophomore organic chemistry and uh, how you're going to be differentiating between a strong base, strong nickel file, or a strong base, weak nickel files, and so on. So I'm going to be putting those in the in the list here. So let's start out with a strong base, a strong nickel file. So a lot of uh, strong bases are actually going to be acting as your strong nickel files. And one big, big example is an hydroxide, so OH minus. So remember, when I'm writing the OH minus means you could have any other any uh, metal here. I could have something like NaOH or I could have KOH. And uh, what really matters in these particular cases is your nucleophile or the base here is going to be the OH minus. So these OH minuses are going to be the strong bases and also going to be the strong nucleophiles. The other example is your methoxide. So O CH3 minus. So again, I could have sodium methoxide, potassium methoxide. You gotta have some sort of metal with it because you're not gonna be adding an cation or anion in the solution. So that's also gonna be your strong base, strong nuke. And I can have OCH2, CH3. So that's an ethoxide. So that's another one that's gonna be commonly seen. The other one that's gonna be commonly seen is your um, alkydes. Basically, you know, I can talk about acetylide. So you have a triple bonded carbon and uh, that carbon is going to have a negative charge because you have removed the proton from that alkyne and obviously it's going to be working only with your terminal alkyne so that could also act as your strong base and your strong nucleophile those are some of the most common strong bases strong nucleophiles you're going to be seeing when you're taking your organic chemistry course let's talk about some strong bases that are actually going to be weak nucleophiles the first example that comes in our mind is going to be your nah or another way of saying an hydride h minus and uh, remember this h minus could be coming from either nah or kh or even i can say lih so it could be coming from any any one of those so this H minus or hydride doesn't really like to act as a nickel file. It's going to be acting mostly like a base. The other examples are going to be something like tert butoxide. So I could have a negative charge on the oxygen. So this is so bulky, it doesn't really like to act as a nickel file unless you're dealing with some sort of metal halides. And then in this particular case, I could have any metal cations, uh, potassium, sodium, or any one of those should be fine. The other typical example is gonna be LDA, and I got DBU, I have DBN. Those are the most commonly seen strong bases weak nickel file you're gonna have. The other example that does come in mind is gonna be your um, NA, NHG. I'm, I'm gonna be putting those in, like in the mixture of the first and two categories, uh, something like NA, NH2 or like KNH2, uh, the bottom line is we're talking about NH2 one minus. This is actually a strong base and it's also gonna be a you know relatively okay nickel file. It's not a weak nickel file. It's, it's still kind of considered a, a strong nickel file, but this doesn't really like to act as a nickel file. Anytime you throw this in there, it's more likely gonna be doing in a, uh, acting as in a base rather than a nickel file. So you may see this kind of being thrown in the category of a strong base rather than a strong nickel file. So that's something you want to keep in mind. This NH2 minus like to act as a base rather than a nickel file. If you want to use um, NH2 or you know, something similar as in a nickel file, why not use ammonia? Like use ammonia, it's, it's a weak base but it's a relatively strong nickel file. So this ammonia will do the job in terms of doing the nickelphilic substitution reactions, but if you use this NaNH2, you're always gonna have a fear that it's gonna run an elimination reaction over the substitution reaction. So let's talk about weak bases and strong nickel file. So if you talk about weak bases, I have you know the conjugate bases of those strong acids like Cl minus, I can talk about Br minus, I can talk about I minus, and those are going to be strong nickel files because they got a negative charge on them. And some other ones, now I say weak bases, but you know, all of those not going to have the same basic strength. Some of them are going to be super weak bases, but some of them are going to have a relatively 
uh, they are going to be relatively stronger bases, but even with that, they write, they like to act as an nickel file rather than acting as in a base. The other examples are like, uh, you know, F minus and CM minus. They're not like super weak bases, but when I'm comparing between them acting as in a base or a nickel file, they rather act as in a nickel file than acting as in a base. Other examples are going to be. Uh, SH minus, that's going to be weak base, strong nickel file. And uh, some other neutral nickel files that's still going to be considered relatively stronger are going to be something like H2S. It's not going to be as strong as SH minus, obviously, but it's still considered relatively stronger nickel file. And it's going to be, a, you know, it's not really going to be acting as in a base in that particular case. The other example I can say, um, would be something like NH3, we talked about ammonia, or any sort of amine, basically. All the amines, they like to act as your nickel file rather than acting as in a base when you're doing these nucleophilic substitution or elimination reactions. So like I said, you know, if I want to compare this NH3, like I have written down here, versus NH2, Obviously, the NH2 has a negative charge in there, so someone might think, okay, yeah, this is going to be a stronger nickel file. And to some extent, it's probably be true, but this NH2 minus like to act more like in a base rather than a nickel file. So anytime you're trying to install an amine group on uh, uh, and trying to do a substitution reaction, you are going to be better off using an ammonia than an uh, NH2 minus in that particular case. So these are some of the examples of you know weak bases got strong and they are going to be acting as a strong nickel files and uh, some common examples of weak bases and weak nickel files are going to be something like H2O and uh, you know any alcohol like methanol I can talk about ethanol those are your weak bases and they are also going to be your weak nickel files now the question is you know, when they're going to be acting as a base and when they're going to be acting as an nickel file, sometimes that has to do with heat. Uh, if you're heating them up, then uh, if they're if you're doing a reaction at an elevated temperature, then these are going to be acting more like a basis. But if you're doing it at room temperature, then they're going to be acting more like a weak nickel files or more like a nickel file. So those are going to be like, you know, comparison between the S1 and the E1 mechanism in that particular case. Uh, so these are going to be the most common list of you know bases and nickel files you're going to be seeing in your sophomore organic chemistry course. If you have any exam, if you have any questions on any of those, feel free to leave any comments in the section below.